What's up, everybody? I'm Derek Gamer. Welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back, and today I am giving you my 40 hours review of Dragon Dogma 2. We got the game. Thank you, Capcom, for giving us a review copy of the game. We got a chance to play it, dive into it, and spend a good amount of time getting familiar with the systems, the gameplay, and all the things that we're all excited to play. And one, I enjoyed the game. I'm gonna talk about the things that I love, things that I didn't like, some feedback for the next game, and just my overall experience. This is not gonna be a full review because I haven't completed the full game. So as far as things like story progression and like story completion, I'm not gonna speak on those things. I'll just speak on essentially how I feel about how the direction is currently going. My family, without further ado, let's dive in. Well, Dragon Dogma 2 is a game that's a direct sequel to Dragon Dogma 1. And when I say that, I mean in the sense of mechanics, gameplay, some exploration, things that you experience in Dragon Dogma 1, you're going to experience in Dragon Dogma 2. So like going into the game, you have to mentally be prepared for what that entails. For people that are familiar with the series, they know what to expect. They're like, okay, cool. I know what I'm walking into, I'm golden. For players that are used, I've never played Dragon Dogma 1, they're used to more how, I would I wouldn't say modernized, modern day RPGs are, there are going to be some adjusting you're going to have to do when it comes to like some things as far as like quest progression, story progression, and I guess it's the same thing, but like traveling, fast travel, those kind of things. But I would say that it's true to the core in terms of what Dragon Dogma is. It kept that. The high points of the game would be I will just briefly go over them. It will be, I love the exploration. I love the fights. I love the class. I love the pawn system. Those are things that are core unique to this game. And some of the things that were a little challenging to get through were some of the traversal things you would do. Some of the quest markings you would do. It kind of reminds me more of a traditional RPG in the way that the game was directing the movement forward. So we'll start off by the story. The story in this game, I would say, is a traditional political campaign that the Arisen find himself in the middle, him or her find himself in the middle of. And it's your job to kind of uncover the truth, partner with some individuals, find some clues, and essentially like unravel all the things that have been going on for some time now. And I'll keep it super, super vague, but essentially that's kind of the direction the story is going. As far as I got in, I spent a lot of times doing side quests. I spent a lot of time exploring, just kind of taking the full game in because I didn't want to do just the story. I wanted to make sure I got a good sense of what it has to offer and the variety of the quests you can encounter as well. I, I should have said this in the beginning, but there's not going to be any spoilers. So don't worry about that in terms of like gameplay story progression. There's not going to be any spoilers in the video. So let's start with things I enjoy. Things I enjoyed are I love the play styles. I love the vocations, the classes. They are a lot of different ways you can play your character and they're kind of accessible. When you start unlocking the vocations, they're not that hard to, I mean, you, you unlock them by doing side quests for some of the advanced ones. But as far as leveling them up and get them going, once you get one or two, like pretty high up there, it's kind of not that bad. As far as like leveling their system up, there is magic, there's range, there is melee, there's close, there's tanks. There's great sword. A lot of things, there's a lot of different ways you can play. So if you're looking for a particular play style that you play in other games, you're gonna find it in this one. I play the thief character, and I switched to the Mystic Spear, and and I'm enjoying the game so far. And I, I'm not, and even even though I haven't started playing the mage classes yet, just the fact of how cool they look, that's I know that's something I'm gonna be able to enjoy later on down the line. So customization, being able to build your character, being able to build your your, your upgrade your weapon armor, it's kind of has a Monster Hunter aspect to it. How you find a piece of weapon or armor, and in order to level it up or send it, you would find monster parts that into the world, find a specific monster, get the drop for it, and you use that to upgrade your gear. So I kind of like that aspect because it makes you want to go out and explore and fight more monsters. And I'll talk about some of the things that are a little bit of a shortcoming to that when it comes to the spawn rate. But as far as the classes vocation, I think it's strong. That's one of the strong points in the game. The pawn system, the pawn system was great. I liked having different pawns and like essentially what you want to do is you want to switch them out every 10 levels or so because their pawns don't level up, but your pawn levels up. So 
it's cool because they give you, hey, there's a chest over here. Hey, I did this quest with my master. Hey, uh, they're, they kind of brings a little more life to your exploration because as you get more pawns that are higher level, maybe than you or close to your level, they've explored so they can see a lot of things. Also, it's cool, super cool being able to bring in like, your friends' pawns that are they're playing with and it kind of makes you feel like you're playing multiplayer but you're not i know this is a big contention with this game there's no multiplayer but that kind of system kind of makes the game feel alive even though it's a single player experience let's say next exploration the world is huge it's huge it's beautiful it's filled with small quests it's filled with big monsters to fight it's filled with a lot of chests around the world for you to discover and I think for me, that was one of the things that I really, really enjoy in games like this. I love getting lost in the world and just kind of just taking my time. I think that's where a lot of, I got a lot of my plays on, to be honest. It's just like, oh, what's over here? Let's go check that out. Oh, what's over there? Let's go fight this. Oh, what monster I fought? That's super strong. Cool. Let me level up my stuff a little bit and let's go back and fight that thing down. So I feel like that's one of the things that I truly enjoyed in the game. It's the exploration and being able to just kind of like hang out, put a a point point on the map that I want to go explore and just go out there and go wild. Next thing I would say that they nailed it and if I can this comes from the Monster Hunter team or the Monster Hunter in them is the boss the boss fights. The big monsters, the big colossal monster. They feel good. They feel good. They're intense, they're action packed. They're they're strong. It makes you feel like dang you really took down a colossal so I feel like that it was probably my most exciting part of this game. It's a big selling point for me in this game is being able to fight these big old monsters. Maybe because I play Monster Hunter, that's like one of my main games on the channel. It kind of makes me feel like, oh, well, it's kind of like Monster Hunter in this game. But I felt they did a fantastic job. The music was great. I think the, the variety of monsters in terms of the big colossal monsters, how aggressive they are. And they're, they're, they're good. They're not too challenging, but they have a little kick to them. And naturally, as you get further and further in the game, they start to kick it up a little bit in terms of like their intensity and their difficulty. But they are manageable. But I think it's, for me, that was the funnest part going through this game. It's like, man, I can't wait till I encounter another big monster to see like how this fight is going to go. Now it's time to talk about the things that are like, hmm, for me, I, I don't know about this one. And I will say things that are I didn't find. I feel like they could have been improved or they're gonna take a different direction, but I felt like they stay consistent to what they were trying to accomplish and that was make a part two of Dragon Dogma. And I feel like maybe this is an opportunity for us to expand a little more and reach a greater audience and adjust and add a little bit, add a couple of things that'll make it more quality of life improvements. And these are things I feel like add later on. So first thing is I love the monster fights, but I feel like there's not enough of them in a conjugated area. I wish there was a way for me to like easily respond to monsters, the big ones, like the ogres. Like I want to farm ogres. Like I, how many, how long do I have to wait for how many times I have to sleep in order for my ogre to respawn. But I think the population density could be increased a little bit. I feel like I wish there were a little bit, a bit more of them. And maybe because I was where I'm in, I'm, I made it to the, I'm the main city that made it to the main desert city. So I've seen a good amount of the game and I feel like it started to kick up a little more, but I feel like I would like to see a little more of the big monster fights. Hot ticket. This is going to be the one that's going to be like, all right, traversal, 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 traversal. You walk everywhere. There's no, there's, there's fast travel. You have these crystals that are in the main cities. And you can teleport to them, but you need to buy an item to in order to use the teleportation to get to the main city. And that item can be pricey. Earlier on, it's kind of pricey. So you're going to find yourself walking a lot of the distance. If you take the ox cart, that's pretty cheap to go. And ox cart has two modes. You can sit in it and it, can, it goes like two miles per hour, which it can go faster. But if you choose to doze off, it instantly takes you there. The only thing is sometimes you can be attacked while you're while you're dozing off, going to your location, fight the monsters, doze off again, you're good. That way, the ox carts are good because they take you, they're good and bad because they take you to fast to a specific location. 
opportunity is it doesn't take you exactly everywhere. Another opportunity is it's kind of limited to how often, not often, what time frames in the day where you can use it. So that's where it's like, oh man, like I wish they just added fast travel. Yeah. I think it, it, you spent a lot of time moving around and earlier on it's fine as you're walking through the different locations and you're like, oh man, so that's boom, boom, boom. You kind of plot out your map where you want to go. But sometimes I'm like, man, I kind of like I was exploring this this city way earlier in the game in a different region. And I kind of don't want to go all the way back. And I kind of don't want to utilize my poor crystals because I might need them for later on. You're like, oh man, I mean, I'll, I'll get to it later. And I feel like sometimes that might be a sentiment that you might feel like, oh man, I'll get to it later. You never get back to it because you don't want to necessarily move all the way down there. And get it. Granted, I haven't finished the game. So I'm not sure as far as how many more of what other things open up in terms of treasure reversal but 40 hours in the game i did so what i'm experiencing so far one gripe i had as well is the fact that there's no other dex vocation there's only thief and i'm like what there's no hybrid there's no advance and it's like thief is cool i like thief it's fast for players like me i like playing fast dex characters it's what i do and I felt like Thief is good, but like as far as the Thief, Thief's moveset, I'm going to have a full video of Thief, my breakdown, my build, all the things showing everything that I found so far. I feel like half the set is like a couple of cool skills are really good for combat. And a lot of them were some other ones are like situational. And you'll see when you play like, oh, blow this thing up or or steal this. And it's like, yeah, you're a Thief, but like I kind of wish they kept the Strider play style or class from dragon dogma one if they were gonna remove like, the assassin or make a rogue and maybe i'm sure they're gonna down the line they're gonna bring a class in for the dex players but i feel like it was a miss by them not having like an advanced or hybrid vocation for like dex players in the game but things we knew this they cap on came on and said there's gonna be 10 vocations and they list all 10 of them, so we knew. So it's one of those things where, like, now playing the game, like, ah, it hurts a little bit more. I wish I would have had another vocation to play that was a dex character. I think equipment weighs interesting. Equipment weight and storage of goods. Like, you're always finding things. You're always heavy. And also, too, it affects your stamina. As you're traversing, the heavier you are, naturally, you run slower. And I wish that sometimes your stamina... I mean, I, I get it. I w For me, personally, it'd be great if your stamina didn't decrease when you weren't in battle. If you're in battle, your stamina decrease makes sense. But if you're out of battle, hey, let's, let me just run. <laughs> if I can't, like, zoom, zoom, zip, zop all through the map, through fast travel, just let me run. And just, like, go do my thing and not have to worry about, like, stamina, stamina, stamina. You know, like, let's let me go. I think for me, like, there are some small t tweaks. I feel the, they're not game-breaking, not, but I feel like small things like that can make it a better quality of life experience. And I think for me, like, I'm looking at my list of things that I felt that were could have been improved. A lot of it's quality of life improvements. It's not the game. The game is fun. And the game is fun. I like to fight and I love this story. The story is really good and good voice acting. And it's good to get into the mechanics of the class and the pond. I think just let me play the game. Let me get in there and like the, some of the things that are make it realistic. Gotta ease up a little bit. It's a fantasy game. It's a fantasy game. Let me ease up a little bit. But these are my thoughts. This is my thoughts so far playing Dragon Dogma for the last 40 hours. It's been a good experience. It's fun. I love diving into the world. Some things I wish could be changed. But overall, it's a positive gaming experience. And I know people are going to love it. And as far as, oh, last thing, the quest markers. I didn't talk about that. The quest markers in this game it will tell you a general area of where quests take place, not specifically exactly where it takes place it's, it's interesting i feel like a lot of games nowadays like hold our hands hold our hands a little bit too much that we're kind of used to like mindlessly following the indicators okay here 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 and now this one is like here and you're like wait wait who who will talk to people who who which one there's a lot of people here and i think that that's their, their goal is to get you immersed in the experience and not getting it reversed in like in ui there's UI is plain, it's clean. There's not much on there going on. So they really want to make you feel the character that we're playing.
But this has been my, my review of the game. It's fun. I'm having a good time for it. I'm going to make a lot of videos and guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment below what your thoughts are and if what you're excited to play, the way, what you're excited the most about the game. My family stay smooth. Till next time, dear gamers, son and now.